Good. All right, today I'm going to talk to everybody and teach you how to use GSAP and do web animation with GSAP. So we're going to bring the web to life with the GreenSock animation platform. Let's start with the basics of GreenSock. It's an API built for scripting animations of HTML elements through JavaScript. What that means is that it's an abstract layer on top of native JavaScript code to perform minute changes to numerical values of any object in dozens of increments each second, which creates the feel of a smooth flow, flow from one value to another. Now, when we apply this to DOM elements in HTML, it produces the illusion of animation. Now, the secret of animation is really the tweens that are created. So, what are tweens? <laughs> tweens, or in-betweens, are the synthetic intermediate frames that get generated um, based off of two different images, and when run, when run concurrently one after the other, it creates the um, animation, the smooth flow from one image to the other. And they're an integral part of any sort of computer animation that you're working with. Now we can start by looking at some code with GSAP. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can actually tween any numeric property of any JavaScript object. So here in this example, I'm bringing in a tween light library and a two method. And this two method takes three parameters. The first parameter being the target object that we want to tween, that we want to work with. The second parameter being, being the duration or the length of the tweening. And the third parameter being the properties on that object with the values that we want them to end with. Now, this will actually change those property values from a starting point of zero to 100 over two seconds. And during those two seconds, the values of that property will be increased in, um, little by little until it reaches the end property values that are listed in that um, parameter, the third, the third parameter. So if we do that for just JavaScript elements, it doesn't really uh, make too much sense. So let's actually apply that to something more visual. And we're going to do that by passing in a DOM element as the object to this two method. And when we do that, TweenLight will actually recognize that we're looking at a DOM element. And it will understand that the properties that we want to modify are not the inherent properties of that element, but rather CSS properties for that element. And by doing so, we can actually give it animations. So let's actually jump into live coding right now. All right, so here we have on my right an HTML document that generates this cup and some text. So here is just a scalable vector graphics for a cup and some text. So let's, let's uh, animate the text and have it jump up to where the, around, around the cup is. So let's start by uh, using tweenmax, and we're going to use its two method. So we're going to specify the end values, the end style values that we want for the text. So I'm going to reference the text directly through document.getElementById, although if you wish, you could also use jQuery or any other ways of selecting DOM elements. So this text I already gave an ID of text. And now we're going to pass for the second parameter the duration that we want for the tween. So I'm just going to use two. And now my third parameter is the object of the properties that I want to tween. So these are CSS-like properties, and not actually CSS properties, but TweenMax will interpret them and translate them for us. So I'm going to have this uh, go up. So this is going to affect its Y value. And we want it to go up. And we're going to set it to be at negative equal 200 pixels. And the reason why we're using negative is because um, to, to the HTML where y equals 0, that is the top of the window. So if I save this and run this, we should get an animation for the uh, text to go up. And if you look closely at this, uh, this uh, style here, we're seeing, we're seeing that it's actually producing a 3D transform style for this text. And the reason why we're seeing that many changes to it is it's because each of these changes is a tween that is being generated by TweenMax and putting, being put on the DOM to create the sensation of animation. So that is how you can work with uh, DOM elements. And now you can do a bunch of fancy things with this. Instead of just modifying its uh, at Y value, we can also give it a rotation. So we can have it, for example, rotate 30 degrees counterclockwise. And we can also give it a scale. And these are all numeric values that can be uh, affected by tweening. And I mentioned earlier that we can also modify the numeric values of any JavaScript object. But what if we also want to do background color? That's something actually 
that we can tween as well just because the background color is really made up of three different numbers, your RGB values. So even if we give it something like a green, TweenMax will understand what we're referring to and it'll allow it to animate. So that is tweening. And let me go back to my slide. Uh, so that's tweening objects in CSS. And we can also apply special unique properties that only GSAP understands, such as eases, callbacks, repeats, and overrides. And I'll be getting into each of them later on. So let's talk about actually controlling our tweens. We have tweens that we want to work with, and there's a lot of things that we want to do with them, but it's not so simple to control them unless you save it in a variable. So here, we're taking the return of the to method, capturing it in a variable, and now we can actually pause it, resume it, reverse it, uh, change its time scale however we please. And this gives us the ability to make any fi fine minute changes in the animation that we need to. And in addition to the uh, to method I that I was working with before, we also have the from method and the from to methods, which allow you to specify exactly which uh, starting values that you want the tween to start with. And that gives us control of many other things that we can work with. And I'll be showing you a little bit of in a minute. So eases are one of the special properties that I mentioned earlier that you can apply to a tween. They alter the rate of change for a tween, and they give it a more dynamic and fluid feel depending on how you want to structure it. And they're very customizable. So I'll be showing you how you work with eases in a second. But we can also uh, tie callbacks to each of our tweens. And this provides us a way of uh, staying in control of our JavaScript environment at all points in time during the animation lifecycle of a tween. And uh, what, what we can really do with callbacks is not only just chain our animations together, but we can also um, use callbacks even further with timelines, which I'll be getting into in a second. But let's actually talk about conflicting tweens, which occurs when you're actually tying together user interaction to animation. So when we, start, um, when we start attaching animations to user interactions, what happens is we probably run, start running into several new issues, which is how do we deal with tweens that actually affect the same object and they're running at the same time? What usually happens is that the tweens can run without any overwriting. They'll conflict with one another, and one will say try and increase the object's opacity, while the other will try to decrease it. And that's the problem, right? Because you don't want it to be fighting with each other. So GSAP's solution is that, by default, whenever a new tween instance renders, it checks all other active tweens of the same target and checks for any overlapping of individual properties. And if it finds any, it'll kill off those overlapping properties that are being affected by those other tweens, and they will not let them be affected any longer by those tweens. So with this solution, the occurrence of any jumpy animations due to user interaction is in most cases handled pretty well. So let's also talk about timelines, which I was getting into. And this is more of an extension of callbacks. With timelines, it gives you the ability to chain long and complex animations uh, with multiple tweens to be something simple and easily controlled. And you can even nest timelines within timelines as deeply as you need to. What this gives you is the ability to modularize your animation workflow. And you have complete control over the relative timings of each part of your animation. They can overlap with each other. Um, they, can, there's, they can be gaps between one animation and another. And you can control the entire sequence of the animation as a whole. And you can work with that by, say, applying uh, time scales on that entire chain of animations or reversing them at any point. And it'll all flow smoothly. So this gives us a lot of potential in working with large scale animations. So let's do some demonstrations. And Let's work with the code that we have over here. So right now, our cup isn't doing anything. And this text is just doing something crazy. So let's actually um, get rid of it. So we're going to change its properties that we want to affect. And we'll, we can still have it go up. So we'll have it go y. Uh, we'll have it go up 200 pixels. And we'll also give it a callback. So in a callback, we can pass it the uh, oncomplete property and an anonymous function as its value, which will be the callback function. And here, we'll actually be tweening the second object, which could be the coffee cup above. So tweenmax dot, let's do a from this time. So we're going to specify the starting 
CSS properties of the coffee cup. As soon as I uh, reference it, so I'm going to use get element by ID for that cup. And we're going to give it a duration of, say, three seconds. And its properties, let's say, we'll have it fly in from the left, so outside of the screen. So we're going to give it an X of uh, negative 100 pixels. And we also probably can give it some other flavor uh, changes like a rotation and also a scale. And we can also get another, we can also use an ease this time. So let's use an ease and we'll actually do it for the text because it's more, uh, you can actually see that if it's here with the text. We're going to give it an ease of bounce. So once the text reaches, or the text is going to actually bounce to its target final location rather than just sliding in. So we'll give it a bit of flavor like that. So we're going to have the bounce at the end of the uh, animation. So we're going to use bounce ease out. So with all of this put together, let's see what we can do. So you see here, one downside of doing um, callbacks and chaining animations with callbacks is that here it doesn't recognize that the cup should have started from 100 pixels outside of the screen until it reached the oncomplete uh, callback. But with timelines, we can take care of all of that and solve our issues really simply. So uh, I guess the last thing I can show you is just a taste of what you can do with tweens and timelines. So here's just something I've put together that can show you if you wrap everything up neatly, you can create something that looks pretty cool. So let me just show you what you can do. That's my presentation. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>